Hello, welcome to the first and last ever TNM podcast where we talk about all things design and communication. My name is Maxwell Anderson and this is my co-host Thomas Neal. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about, about some of our own thoughts and opinions uh, around design and, and, and everything that we personally feel is, is uh, correct and, and have a little discussion. Uh, Thomas, uh, so I'm gonna, where do I'm you want to start? Up, actually with a question for you, Max, and uh, oh, okay. that is... Do you think it's possible to not be a designer? And with that, is there any objects that have no design behind them? Something that wasn't designed? Ooh. Yeah, you, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna have to go with my, my, my own personal opinion is uh, no. Uh, it's not possible to not be a designer if you're ever creating something. And, and around the objects that, uh, you know, if there's any objects that hasn't been designed, uh, uh, I think that any object that has been created by a person has to have intention. And this person, when they were creating some sort of object to design, I can even pull up some of the own things that I myself have created. I've created this little box I used to hold some of my old quarters and dollar coins and I have even a few collector, you know, collection coins. I made uh, this little figurine that I printed myself and you know, and a bracelet here. These are all things that I personally made and, and I had a concern and an attention behind them. You know, this, the bracelet, I, I wanted uh, something that sort of, that I can wear and, and represents a piece, you know, shows a bit of piece of my own personality behind it. Uh, this box, I wanted something, uh, you know, beautiful and, and functional. Everything that a person keeps, you know, lays their hands on and decides to create has an intention behind it and a concern that they themselves are acting upon. Um, I would even argue, you know, some of the first things that our ancestors created had a concern behind them, survival. You know, the first stone tools allowed it, you know, was easier to cut down trees or uh, cut up meat, hunt animals. All of the, uh, all of those items have the concern behind them of, how do I keep me and my family safe and fed and continue on uh, and, and provide for them? Um, so likely, you know, just in the same respect, anything around us today that has been created has some sort of concern. There's a concern for, oh, I need a good light source. I need something that I can see at night and be able to write and read uh, in order to do basic functions. Uh, or your phone. Uh, lots of different things that your phone can do. It was, it was definitely designed and heavily designed uh, to be functional and usable. Um, and, and so I, I think it's Im impossible, you know, in, in, in daily life, everything that we do has to have some sort of an intention behind it. So if you create something, a meal or a piece of writing, um, you know, all day, at least you know, nowadays, our generation sends texts and messages. Um, even those are designed. You, you go through and you, you have an intention behind the words that you say. Uh, so I think it's impossible uh, for a person not to be a designer and, and to not have a design around something. Um, that's, that's, that's how I feel. Thomas, I'm going to ask that question right back at you. What, do you what, what, what is your personal opinions? How do you feel about that? Well, I think uh, this idea of intention is a really, really interesting one because uh, you can have an intention to design something. So I want to talk a little bit about this example um, using machine learning. Um, this company, they had, they wanted to redesign a new type of glider. They wanted to make it as uh, both light and strong as possible. Mm -hmm. So they fed this machine, all right, this is what we want to achieve. We want it to be light. We want it to be able to uh, fly using wind currents and... Um, we want it to be very strong, so if it hits something, it'll be okay. It was basically like making a uh, a quadcopter frame, if you know what a uh, a quadcopter looks like. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, they didn't actually want to design it themselves, so they didn't want their ideas of what it should be to go into it. They just had this intention of an end goal. Um, mm. So what the machine did is it kept on reiterating. It would design it, it would test it, it would use that test, and it would design it again, and it did this millions of times. And what you end up with is actually a structure that looks a lot like a, uh, a flying squirrel. So it has a very similar bone structure to a flying squirrel, um, which I found incredibly interesting because now this brings up the question of, well, maybe even things in nature are designed that 
but they have this intention, like you said, of survival. And through millions of generations, it's this iterative design process. So I think that even, even blind design is still design, right? So in evolution, they don't technically, you know, mutations don't know what way they're going, but it's still designing. And then it's like a new way of design where you, you put everything out there and you try a bunch of different ways and you see what survives and you just by your surroundings end up with its own design. Um, so I, I think I, in a way, I agree with you. There really is no way to avoid uh, some, the, everything's going to be designed, whether it's over mi millions of iterations or they try to get it right the first time by really thinking through all the steps they need. Um, the end product that we're left with is always have some sort of intention and design behind it. See, I think that's interesting uh, the way that you said, said that, because I would agree with you that the machine, the, the, the machine, the AI creating the glider is a piece of design and has intention behind it. Um, but I think I would disagree with, with evolution having an, an intention and a piece of design. Um, uh, mo mostly because for my own personal beliefs, there's, there's not an, there's the only driving force behind evolution is, is, is survival. There's not an intention for growth and there's not an intention for survival. You could say individuals, my, my opinion is you can have individuals have an intention for survival, but an evolution process of a biological process, you know, animal wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily have an intention. So, so then let me ask you, in your mind, is it uh, like natural objects, they're not so much as designed, but they just exist, they're are just a result? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's, an interesting case of verbiage. You know, I, I wouldn't use the, the word design for a tree. Like I'm looking at a tree right now out of my window. And I, I wouldn't say that the tree is designed, um, but I, I wouldn't know what word to use for it. Um, because I, I, I can see what you're saying. You know, they're, they're, the individual species has, you know, wants to continue itself and is, is genetically predisposed to do that. But is that intention? I don't know. You know, there's no end goal, right? So what is the, 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 there's no end goal for a being. So what is intentionally designed that's, there or not? You that's know? a good point. Yeah. I mean, you know, speaking of, of end goals, I think like, I think that's you know some sort of end goal in, in mind is actually really important for an intention and for a concern and, and therefore a design. And so, you know, we we we've sort of we've talked about a little bit uh, um, about you know ourselves. You know, I, I mean, I showed some objects that I made, um, and that you know something that a human makes, you know, is a has a design and, and is is a designer. So I think it's pretty safe to say that. You and I are designers. We make things. We we have intentions and concerns. Uh, what what is what would you say is uh, your end goal whenever you design something and try and create something um, in either your sense of design or, or communication? So uh, this is sort of uh, a running joke that's more become a mantra for me. Um, it started with my buddies a long time ago and. At some point, we started noticing things that were poorly designed, and we just made it. We said, if we ever ran our own company one day, our uh, our mission statement would just simply be making stuff better forever. So I can't stand finding things that are almost perfect, but uh, they have small flaws that really make them fall apart. Um, mm -hmm. One example I'll show is I have right next to me. I don't know if you've heard of the company Tile. They make these little um, uh, yeah. things that you can keep. I lose everything. If it's not attached to me, I lose it. I've gone through too many wallets. So I keep one of these in my wallet all the time. The mm. only problem is they keep, there's no way to recharge it. So what I've done is I've taken it apart to find the battery in here. And um, I'll rig oh, it cool. and recharge it myself. Um, but to me, it's like, I think it's unacceptable to send something with a battery that could be recharged and won't be recharged. Um, mm. So whenever I design something, I basically... I try to think of it shouldn't just do what it's trying to do, but it should do it as good as it possibly can. And um, like 
a good something here i'll show you where'd they go <clears throat> to me i for the longest time people have been buying airpods now right and they're mm. saying and they're telling me you have to get wireless headphones and I said, ah, why why are headphones they work for me but i finally caved and i got the new uh samsung wireless headphones mm. and they work so well i don't think i would ever go back to wired headphones um just the like, <laughs> Not having a wire changes everything, it, and you don't realize it until it's already there. So when I design something, I want, I want to solve problems that people don't realize even exist. And they go, ah, that's mm. not a problem. And I go, here, try it. You could have it. Try it out for a week, and then it will be the type of object that after they use it for a little bit of time, they'll never go back. They'll question mm. how they did things before they had it. Um, so I guess that it's making things that people want to use and trying to – and I don't mind if someone if someone has a good idea, I'll go, man, that's a great idea. Except they're doing this one thing wrong, and it'd be way better if they did that. And I'll fix it like mm. that. Um, it's part of the reason why I think 3D printers are great, and uh, the uh, yeah capability of fast prototyping. You have one in your room too? I do. Yeah, I've got one right over here. That's it's, uh, it's, uh, right over here well, um, that's it's awesome. Being able to like prototype and just be like, oh, this is close, but you can tweak it, and it's those tiny tweaks, and then you finally hone it in, and it's perfect. Mm. But uh, what about you? How how do you see yourself progressing as far as design goes? Yeah, uh, if I, if I may, I wanted to to just you know talk about your your angle, and I, I think that's very altruistic um, uh, point of view of, of always wanting to to improve and, and having the mantra of uh, for for a company if you ever own one, trying to produce something that's the best that it possibly can be, um, because I think what was funny because the the uh, the, mo the moment you mentioned the tile and it not being able to recharge, the, the first thing I thought was that was a very intentional design, uh, des design choice oh, absolutely. of, of, do of not being able to recharge a device that you use to never lose something um, almost forces the customer to be like, oh, it doesn't work anymore. Got to buy a new one. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's where design can be um the design is doing exactly what it's meant to be doing but is not beneficial to the person using it it's only beneficial to the person making it which is it was a very it was the very first thought that i thought of it was very yeah that's actually interesting. that's a really interesting idea especially nowadays where uh i mean people governments are suing companies over it the idea of this um and um, obsolescence intentional failures where they, yeah. they break down um yep. and we're seeing it more and more and that's like I've always heard this rumor that uh, tire companies have created tires that won't pop and won't wear nearly as fast and they'll never release them because no one will buy tires anymore. And <laughs> that always blows my mind. Like if you can design yeah. it better, it should be designed better, even if you make less money. Um, I, I, I agree. I think, I think my uh, end goal in design lines up very closely with yours. Um, I think, I think what's funny is, um, uh, both of my parents are, are very good writers and they're both professors. And so writing is a huge part of their life and it's sort of been passed down to me. And so what I think is, is um, interesting between where I am as a mechanical, you know, as a mechanical engineering major uh, and what I want to be doing with my career and uh, communication is, is the two design goals that I have in my head are separate between making an object and writing a report. Um, and, and so my design goals for making an object is, is similar to yours is, is make it as, as beneficial to the user as possible without worry of ease. Well, you want it to be easy to make and manufacture, especially if you're trying to make a lot of them. Right. But if taking a hit on simplicity and ease of manufacture means it's more beneficial to the user then that is way higher on the priority list. Um, uh, I can talk about my, my intro projects class uh, that I took freshman year. Uh, we actually made, we had a client for our project uh, at Ryan Elementary School, which is a elementary school down in Louisville. Uh, and they have a program uh, for uh, kids with autism uh, to help them grow and develop and, and uh, in, in ways that they wouldn't otherwise without the program. And so the program came to our class and asked for a game that would help them develop their motor skills. Uh, and so me and my team created a game that we called Button Bop, 
It was basically a big board. It was, it was pretty tall and wide uh, to force the children to actually move around. That had a screen in the center that would flash a color. And all of the buttons had an acrylic window next to them that uh, the lights behind would change color. And they would change randomly every single time. And so there were the, the, the screen in the center would flash blue. You would have to find the light that was flashing blue and press that button. Um, and I think it was funny, I, I eventually came to a leadership role, role in that group um, because my design goals, I felt more strongly about my end goal for the project than anybody else in the group. Yeah. What I wanted was a product that the elementary school could use for ideally years, but at least you know a, a good chunk of time where it wouldn't break down and they would actually be able to use it for the intent that they had. Um, and the rest of my group only had the intention of getting a good grade in the class. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's really where you start to split apart the quality of designers. You know, where, where someone calls themselves a de designer is when they have the intention of making the design good. And when people don't call themselves designers is when they don't necessarily have the intention. Um, but I mentioned that my design goal for creating objects and writing was different because um, in writing, my end goal for a piece of design there is to make it as easy as possible for the user to understand my thought process, um, oh, which, which is similar but, but slightly different, right? I don't mean it to be easy to consume. I want it laid clear and bare about what my personal thoughts and feelings or what I'm trying to communicate, whatever it is. Um, it should be clear what my intent is in the piece. Um, even if it is a complex piece of technical writing, uh, you know, writing about complex equations or ideas or guidelines, requirements that might be hard to hold in your head, but the intent of the piece is, is, is always, it's my goal to always make the intent of the piece clear. Um, and doing design work of where thing where different paragraphs are placed and how different sentences are structured um, to try and meet that goal. That's interesting. Just the uh, uh, I don't know, sort of the dichotomy, the differences between designing a product and designing writing. Um, yeah, it's sort of because uh, writing isn't always a tool or something to be used a lot of times it's just something to be consumed and thought about whereas when you're designing a product it's almost always it as a function or yeah. it's aesthetically pleasing there's something there's something you can actually hold to it besides just something that you think about um and that's very interesting yeah well, well um seems like we're uh, we're coming to an end here uh yeah. our first podcast first and last first. ever podcast oh man it's been a good one um <laughs> Self-titled uh, Intention, the Crux of Design. I <laughs> love it. I like oh, it. I love it. All right. Well, Thomas, it's been great speaking to you. You as uh, well. Uh, I hope you have a good day. Yeah. And, uh, and... Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>